I'm Guy Daniels, Director of Content at Telecom TV, and you're watching our live Q&A discussion, part of the NFE Evolution Programme Series, brought to you by Etsy, produced by Telecom TV and sponsored by Huawei. Well, hopefully you've had a chance to watch the demos and presentations online, as well as our interview with Etsy NFE ISG Chair Bruno Chatras, and our panel discussion on the operational experience and pain points of NFV. And now's your chance to ask questions to some of our presenters. It's very simple, just use the form here on the website to submit your questions if you haven't already done so, and we'll try and get through as many of them as we can. So let me now introduce our guests, and joining me are Deng Hui, Director of 5GC NFV MEC Standards at Huawei, Lingli Deng, Technical Manager and Senior Researcher, Artificial Intelligence and Intelligent Operations Center at the China Mobile Research Institute. Juan Trie, Manager and Network Architect with the Docomo Communications Lab Europe. Pierre Lynch, Lead Technologist at Keysight Technologies. Boja Novales of the Universidad Carlos Teltero de Madrid and Gian Pietro Lavado, Solutions Architect with Whitestack. Well, hello everyone, very good to see you all. Now, before we start our audience questions and to give viewers a little more time to send them in, let's briefly recap the presentations that you and your colleagues gave, all of which are available to view on demand here on the website. Ling Li, your presentation looked at orchestration towards automation. What was the main message that you were given there? Um, yes, as you said, uh, the topic is about automation and a little bit of history recap on um, what automation is actually playing a key role as we are defining um, ex expected outcomes from an FB. And right now, as China Mobile has been showing the largest on scale NFP deployment, uh, we also find out that NFP has been a major driver for us to do further network automation. And uh, lastly, but not least, um, network automation has been a wider range of uh, transformation of operation across all layers. And NFP has been a key um, infrastructure layer. So uh, we have been working with our partners um, to uh, explore potential solutions and also working on specifications within NVISG to further automate uh, manual. But also we are calling for help uh, from other partners um, so that we can solve network automation um, in the whole picture and having an FE to play what is expected to be delivered in the first place. And uh, specifically, China Mobile has been targeting at um, achieving level four autonomous network by 2025. So with only like three years ahead, we have a lot to do and we are looking forward to work with our partners and also with NFEISG to address um, those issues ahead. And that's it. More information discussions will, will, will be, and I, I hope and we, we could be working on the smooth parts and um, actually including uh, some of the existing work, including um, policy, um, including um, intent-based API definition, and also some of the um, intelligent use cases um, also are starting to emerge with NFV log analysis, et cetera. And um, also with the DevOps tooling and cross organizational uh, further automation, um, and which would place manual as the key component to enable um, the required continuous delivery um, pipeline uh, for us to maintain automation. So um, to address the automation within NFV domain and also to um, improve manual and to further explore its potential of being the basic 
an infrastructure for us to, um, you know, uh, improve network automation in you know, all. So that would be um, what we would see as part of the important direction for NFE evolution for the next three or four years. Thank you, Ling Li. We've got some um, audio issues with you, which we'll, we will endeavor to sort out as fast as we can. Um, but uh, we, you know, we will we'll come back to you later in the program. For now though, Pierre, let me turn to you. You covered in your presentation how we can measure the NFV evolution with Etsy NFV plug tests. You know, tell us more about this and have we seen good results from these? We have. Uh, the, the last plug test just ended about just a little over a month ago. Um, it was focused more on API conformance testing than uh, interoperability testing. Um, there, there are 21 entities tested and, and five open source communities contributing to that as well. So that's really, really good. The participation was, was very high. Over 1,200 test cases were run. Uh, and the overall pass rate was just over 50%. So both of those numbers are improvements from previous plug tests where the API were done. Uh, the most popular was uh, the OSMA uh, uh, reference point, which is a northbound uh, interface between the BSS OSS and the uh, orchestrator with over 700 test cases run there. Uh, the versions that were run were mostly 2.4.1, 2 2.61, and a little bit of 2.71. Um, 2.61 being the most popular. Uh, but a little point, uh, release three hasn't been tested yet at a plug test. Now, um, the most popular entity that uh, that was tested was the orchestrator. Um, more test cases were run against the orchestrator than anything else. The, the um, most mature interface is definitely OSMA. So basically the whole five reference with uh, a higher percentage uh, pass uh, rate and also more APIs tested because every one of those reference points contains multiple APIs, whereas for that reference point, four, five uh, APIs were tested. So that seems to be the most mature. Conversely, the SOL2 uh, reference point, which is the reference point between the VNF manager and VNF's EMS, that one was hardly tested, just a handful of test cases. So that I found a little bit concerning. Hopefully we'll be able to improve that going forward. In addition, uh, always good from a plug test, there was a ton of feedback on, on the specifications themselves, the sole documents, which was fed back into the sole working group. And also for me personally, what I love is the tests themselves, which were done using uh, TST010, so test 10 uh, automated test suite. So we got a lot of feedback on that and every single bug was fixed subsequently. The other cool thing is we had uh, an experimental track this time with CNCF, so Cloud Native Computing Foundation, where we ran some of their test cases in an experimental track. And hopefully that'll be able to get formalized uh, going forward in that collaboration uh, will will live on for a long, long time. Yeah, let's hope so. Thanks very much for the update. Gian Pietro, let me turn to you now. You spoke about advances in the deployment of standardized NFE orchestration. You know, give us a quick update of that if you can. And also, how does the work of Etsy OSM fit with the NFV ISG? Uh, well, first of all, uh, it fits in, uh, well, it fits in two aspects, I would say. Uh, first of all, and as I'm showing the presentation, uh, the progress of Etsy OSM in the adoption of the standards defined by Etsy NFB ISG is the first highlight. And taking into account that the pace of our adoption is based on, on the priorities we see at the field, the operations, what the operators want, want in the field. And of course, based also in testing efforts with other vendors, like the ones we do in, in Etsy NFB plug tests and private uh, POCs with telcos. Uh, and, and the second thing I would say, uh, it, and based on this adoption, testing, and, and deployment efforts, uh, we provide feedback to the Etsy and FBISG in the form of, of proposals for improving or expanding SOL and IFA definitions, and also more conceptual feedback as well. 
for example, in the presentation, I'm highlighting the, the need for evolving the standards around the opportunities NFB orchestration has for configuring network functions, uh, what many telcos call day one and day two operations, because we are seeing a lot of value perceived by operators when they are able to orchestrate and forget, right? That, that means you deploy the network net service and this service is ready to connect subscribers in a matter of minutes. So that, that's a big value. So to sum up, what you will be able to find in, in, in the presentation is uh, first, I'm showing the progress of HCOSM in the adoption of NFB ISG standards, then some information about our recent experience in the HC NFB flag tests mentioned by, by Pierre. And finally, a little bit of detail about uh, the first live deployment, uh, which is the case of Telefonica in Chile. And of course, some feedback and opportunities we see for evolving NFB standards, uh, as this year we have the commitment to deploy in other four operators in Latin America. Excellent, thanks for the update, Jean Pietro. Borja, may, may I perhaps um, move across to you now? And you gave us a, a case study that was looking at an NFE system to support service provisioning on UAV platforms. What conclusions did you reach from this project and, and why did you do it? Okay, uh, hi guy, hi everyone. So regarding the question, the, the, the main conclusion that uh, we can derive uh, from our work is that the applicability of NFB and the, uh, and the virtualization technologies enables uh, not only the, the flexible deployment of uh, unmanned aerial vehicles or UAVs, or as these uh, vehicles are most commonly known, uh, drones, but uh, also allows to, to dynamically execute uh, different and moderately complex uh, network services uh, over these aerial uh, uh, vehicles uh, that are capable to, to adopt or to address different uh, mission uh, requirements and different mission uh, objectives. Uh, in addition, uh, with, uh, with this uh, approach, uh, we have seen that uh, it is feasible to, to realize a, a practical solution. And uh, from that, uh, our goal now is to, to, to let's say, to, to look for new research uh, lines uh, and in particular we, we, we consider that uh, it could be possible to, to integrate uh, different and heterogeneous uh, compute connect uh, devices that uh, may exist in the deployment area uh, where we deploy the UAVs to, to, to provide a specific service with the, with the aim of uh, contributing to have a, a beyond the edge uh, NFB infrastructure with a potential uh, a limited uh, pool of resources that uh, could uh, contribute to, to support the cost-effective and reliable operation of the services that are uh, provisioned uh, beyond the edge of the telecommunication uh, operators. Uh, and we do this because we, we think that the, the, the UAVs, we can take advantage of the inherent uh, capabilities of the UAVs to provide on-demand uh, communication services that are uh, enabled by the, by the use of the, of the NFP technology, of course. I see, fascinating. Thank you, Borja. Um, well, some of our presenters are unable to join us on this live panel. However, I'm hoping their colleagues here can help cover their presentations. Deng Hui, we had a presentation from Huawei that looked towards the future of NFV with edge native containerization, network and NFV convergence. What were the main conclusions from that? Yes. Hi, guys. So I, I think the uh, MV started from the 4G start originally, um, then come to the 4.5G become more popular. Uh, but it's a big success. So I see MV it came from the 5G core deployment today. Uh, in Huawei's background, we, we deploy more than 100,000 per data center. Uh, MV servers uh, for the telecom VNFs, which support 5G core capability. So that's a very good success uh, proof of the LC MV specification, uh, which, uh, which allows the IT technology has been used by the telecom operators. Um, but look at the success of today of 5G core deployment. I think more and more operators look at the future vision uh, from our presentation, we talk about the uh, cloud, nat cloud native and also cloud intelligence. 
uh, especially um, if you look at the container technology. Uh, we think the LC MV has played a very critical role for the telecom operator uh, to adopt the standard architectures uh, to which is aligned with telecom infrastructure. And uh, they are looking more and more capability, for example, DevOps. So we we, sh we presented also microservice-based uh, and AMB, uh, micro-based uh, AMB testing. Uh, that's a strong DevOps capability. And also the future vision from the uh, virtualized environment to the con uh, virtual containerized uh, environment, uh, even to the future bare matter uh, containers. So that, that's the direction uh, we are trying to uh, share with the uh, whole industry, uh, with our customer, with our partner, with, uh, with uh, standard partners, everybody, uh, to try to help the telecom uh, to win more confidence uh, when they are talking about the cloud technology, talking about the IT technologies. The operator uh, does have this capability to deploy uh, such solution in their network. Thank you very much for the update there. And finally, Joanne, we also had a Docomo presentation on experience in developing and operating NFE and, and future expansion. Could you summarize the main areas there for us, please? Yes, uh, of course. Um, so, yeah, if you have seen the presentation from my colleague, Konosan, um, we wanted to share from Docomo the experience in deploying uh, NFE. Um, precisely using the SCNFV uh, reference architecture as the model for deployment of uh, NFV. So we focus initially on the mobile core, and as the numbers uh, displayed uh, in the presentation, uh, we are scaling up uh, the deployment uh, already over 50%. And um, that concerns the mobile core. So in the presentation, also my colleague uh, uh, introduces how we expect to uh, to extend it. And one of the main pillars is, of course, uh, the opportunities that the deployment of 5G core uh, brings to the operator to also uh, virtualize uh, even more uh, functions in the network and even introduce more virtualization in the, in the network. And um, one of the items that uh, was reflected in, in the presentation is also that uh, into, in this migration into a uh, more cloud native way. Um, we are also finding out uh, that there's a little bit of uh, impediment for hardness. Uh, concerns on how uh, uh, integrating this type of technologies can really uh, benefit the operator and how the uh, operator can also manage them in a way that we can provide uh, long-term services uh, because this is what we are requested and demanded by, by uh, the subscribers. Um, we are thinking about different ways on, on how to overcome these obstacles. And, uh, for example, in the presentation, um, Kuno-san um, explains about the use of uh, potential generic OIM functionality, uh, which can uh, help decouple and remove dependencies of the VNFs uh, towards the infrastructure, but at the same time to acknowledge that uh, we have to um, make good use of the actual resources provided by the platform and the infrastructure. So there are also needs that we can make the application fully leveraged. And one of the aspects that are um, showcased in, in the presentation is, for example, uh, use of uh, pinning uh, to increase the performance of the functions. And one last message that is also depicted in the presentation is the um, uh, call for collaboration and um, good uh, cross SDO uh, um, coordination to make sure that uh, operators can also uh, leverage the assets that have already been uh, uh, used and deployed uh, for certain parts of the domains um, and how we can uh, make them use for, for example, extending the network uh, virtualization into uh, the RAN and the MEC domains. And, Basically, these are the uh, key uh, takeaways from, from the presentation. Excellent. Thank you very much for that. And thank you, everyone. It's also worth mentioning that there are three additional presentations from the open source community, including the CNCF and the LFN. Again, these are available to watch here on the website. 
Well, okay, time for our first audience question. And please keep sending them in. We'll get through as many of them as we can. Um, I'm going to pick this question first. This one has just come in in the past few minutes. Um, and let's see who'd like to answer this one. Here's, here's the question. And it's very direct. Is NFV as relevant today in 2021? Won't vendors just make sure their apps work okay on AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, etc.? Because most of the data centers and distributed cloud pops will be run by those cloud giants. So they get to the heart of the question then, you know, is NFV as relevant today as it was when we, we first conceived it? Who would like to tackle this first one? Deng Wei. Right, so the I think the te uh, telecom cloud uh, in the most operator, especially in the Asian countries, are different from the the IT. I mean, the cloud from running from AWS or Google Cloud. Uh, the uh, the reason is the telecom really would like to run their own, like for example, four G and five G call in their own telecom cloud, which is called uh, private cloud or whatever. Um, but they are different from the the uh, public cloud. So the public cloud today mostly the outside of the operator office and they are in the uh, some regions, um, but maybe close, sitting close to the operator or some of small components even enter into the telecom uh, office. But still, uh, telecom cloud is, has its own um, centers. It's different from public cloud. The purpose they are serving is different. So the telecom cloud, they are serving their uh, telecom infrastructure, for example, 5G call, 4G call. Um, but the public cloud is serving like applications. So the uh, they have different requirements. The 5G call has strong like uh, high reliability requirements, but applications uh, it's different. So we are guaranteed 69 uh, uh, high reliability requirements. Uh, so uh, the Telecom Cloud might use some open source in the infrastructures, but they are not sufficient, not enough, and doesn't have high performance, security, reliability, multiple domain, many things, uh, which is supported by the telecom operators and vendors. They are uh, much stronger uh, capabilities. So I think this is a different world. And in the scale, I think uh, Telecom Cloud, in my impression, for example, I heard in the la one of the largest operators in the in China or in Asia, there are more than hundreds of thousands nodes per, per center, per data center. There are uh, multiple uh, data center in, in the nationwide. So you can as you can imagine, it's a big technical cloud, it's not a small one. Back to Guy. Thank you very much. Yes, you know, this, this whole question of the public cloud continues to get a lot of questions in from, from certainly from our audience. Um, here's another question that we, we had in slightly earlier today. Oh, sorry, Pierre, please. If I can, just very briefly, uh, being in a test company, what I can tell you where our test tools are being used. And uh, the, it's it's a hybrid, so a lot of public cloud, but it depends on the workload that, uh, to, to see what goes into the public cloud versus a private cloud where the telco workloads uh, are being used. So our test equipment is being used in both, but for telco applications, it's all private cloud type of platforms. Interesting. Thank you for that. Uh, well, let's let's then move on to our next question. Then uh, it's one we got in a, earlier today. Um, the question is to promote NFE standards to other areas such as RAN or MEC. Will other SDOs or open source communities need to adopt Etsy NFE specifications for their own areas? For example, ORAN or Etsy MEC. Any thoughts about about this? Anybody like to have a stab? Yep, yes, please. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think that uh, it was uh, also part of the presentation uh, when we mentioned to to leverage as much as possible also the uh, the good outcomes from the Etsy NFV. Um, uh, Etsy NFV specs are being referenced uh, not only from a standards point of view, I mean, also from, from actual deployments uh, perspective. So operators and vendors are already using them um, in, in that matter. Um, when it comes to, to standards, um, there is already a good uh, um, background and good uh, collaboration already uh, happening uh, in different areas. And 
Uh, MEC, for example, is, uh, is a very uh, good example. Um, since already a long time ago, it's acknowledged the coordination that uh, CMAC is doing with uh, the IAC NFV. And uh, the good also results on analyzing the compatibility of the different frameworks so that, uh, for example, uh, NFV can be reduced for, for deploying MEC uh, workloads. Um, in terms of, uh, of other uh, network domains, um, I mean, we are also uh, collaborating with, uh, for example, extending applicability of, uh, of interworking NFV technology with, uh, with uh, transport. And there's a lot of good uh, analysis also ongoing uh, of SNFV uh, profiling uh, protocols that are delivered by other organizations. So it's not only a transfer of uh, information from SNFV to the other organization, but also what SNFV can learn from the others. And this is also a very uh, clear case, I would say, also for, for when we are talking about the brand. Uh, even uh, virtualization and codification of run, of run is not uh, a new thing. Um, this use case has been there for a long time. Uh, now is when it's uh, coming uh, uh, more into, into, um, into the market, into the industry, into the discussions. And in that sense, uh, there has already been lots of references to the XNLP work. Uh, but now that the, the standards are developing, now is also the opportunity to make sure that uh, we can uh, transfer the know-how uh, acquired by the XNFV uh, into those other domains because in many cases there are, of course, there are new requirements and new uh, special use cases to be considered, but the baseline technology and the baseline uh, framework uh, looks very much the same. So in, in that perspective, it would be a real pity that uh, XNFV standards are not preferred uh, because, uh, I mean, it would be just a waste of time uh, to, to redo again and, and start from a scratch uh, when there is already a very good platform. Um, and in that case, uh, as, as, as in the presentation also delivered by the colleague, uh, the important uh, matter here is to make sure that the uh, SDOs and SDOs with open source uh, can uh, good co uh, collaborate in a good manner and can try to, to coordinate the efforts to make more efficient the delivery of the standards which are needed by the operators and the vendors for the actual deployments. Excellent, thank you. And, and uh, you mentioned the, the radio access domain there and this ties in very nicely with the question we have just received a few minutes ago. And the question is, how does Etsy NFV collaborate with VRAN and ORAN? I think the question is looking at more of a, a technical level or procedural level. Is there, is there like a, a formal collaboration in place or is it, these connections informal? I, maybe I can answer it a bit. Uh, um, the collaboration is a little bit informal. Uh, however, to my knowledge, it might become more formal due to also the col a formal collaboration between Etsy and Oran uh, that is being established or, or has already been established. Uh, so, at the moment, it's more informal on exchange of information. Uh, but now that we have uh, a better framework for collaboration, uh, probably there's uh, more uh, direct coordination in between the, the two organizations. I, I hope so. Yes, indeed. We, we, all, we all hope so. Thank you, Johan. And we have a, a, a question in for Ling Li and Ling Li's presentation earlier. And the question is, with regards to automation in NFV, what is the relationship between each adjacent layer? For example, if we look at DevOps and intent, will, will DevOps be promoted only when the intent capability is available in the framework? Um, thank you for the question. Um, this is actually paying special attention to what is presented and George on the slide. Um, actually, the, answer, the short answer is no, um, but also yes. So um, there is no technical dependency. Um, we should involve or introduce DevOps just after intent. But from the practical uh, 
considerations we would envision um, because uh, several standardization organizations has already been pushing hard in defining and abstracting end-to-end -end APIs um, based on their role-based closed-loop infrastructure. And uh, also we have a good shape of work going on also in terms of DevOps and standardization. But for DevOps to be actually working, especially as we would expect to uh, enable automation cross-organizational in that manner, it's actually not a transformation or enablement from technical perspective, but also a transformation of how network operators would actually do their network construction uh, um, or update um, and embed it with their existing operation workflow. So it's actually a transformation of DevOps into their operational uh, organization and also um, workflow. So that would take much longer time. So that is actually um, an interpretation also taking into our internal experience um, the ongoing transformation with related aspects. So that is not from the technical perspective. Thank you, Ling Li. Well, there's a, there's a second question um, directly related to your presentation. I hope you can uh, answer this one as well for us. And it's a question about the spatial dimension of the automation framework. And the, the question is just asking, will the NFV work be focused on the autonomous domain or the infrastructure domain or both? Um, well, I think that would be dependent on what an FBISD would be providing with us. Uh, so with that diagram, uh, or by definition, an autonomous domain is actually uh, not defined by the functionality or, or the service logic it delivers, but the behavior of how it can be managed, whether or not it can be self-managed and uh, manifest itself to be, um, you know, uh, capable of doing some self-managing um, capability. And uh, in our interpretation, NFV from the uh, functional um, service functional perspective certainly covers infrastructure management. But by now, it alone does not enable it to be equivalent to an autonomous autonomous domain. Uh, what I mean is that um, by itself, MANO um, is not um, complete in providing a closed loop um, automation and capability by itself. It may need enhancements um, with, um, you know, for example, policy management or intent uh, driven coordinated uh, mechanisms etc. But with that enhancement, it could be a candidate for autonomous domain and uh, would be setting a very sound basis for, our, for us to um, enable not only core network automation, um, but also, as we discussed earlier, and other technical domains like RAN or even, um, you know, collaborating more closely with transport areas as well. So um, currently, I would say um, it's more like infrastructure layer, but um, we have potential of in enhance it and equip it and to be able to manifest it as a autonomous domain in the future. Great. Thank you very much for, for that. Uh, Jean-Pietro. Yeah. Just to add to what Lingli just mentioned, uh, in open source MANO, we are experimenting with closed loop operations with uh, which are self-contained in that layer, like for, for example, automatic scaling and automatic healing. So that's a, an extra reference that can be used for evolving the part. Excellent. Thank you for that. Um, let's just move on to a, a, a broader question that we received, and this is, I believe this is probably focused at the panel discussion that, that preceded this live Q&A where we looked at the operational experiences and pain points, but the question's a good one. Um, and the question is, how are operators dealing with training of their technical staff? Could it be that the lack of technical training in NFE technologies is one of the barriers preventing wider deployment of NFV. Jean-Pietro, please. 
Thanks. Yeah, I would like to mention something because we do a lot of training. Um, I, I think that, yes, it, it's, it is related because horizontal multi-vendor NFV deployments, which is the kind of deployments that we are powering with NFV standards, imply that the telco, the operator, is able to actually operate this NFV infrastructure. And since most of them come from the experience in vertical deployments, uh, where the VNF provider controls everything, they don't have uh, the experience to operate most things uh, nowadays. So I do see a need for more training in cloud operations specifically, and that's what we do, for example, with our customers that are, adop uh, that are adopting uh, or, and a more horizontal NAB deployment or multi-vendor NAB environment. Thank you. And Juan, you want to add something about the, the, the training aspect? Yeah, well, I, I'm not going to answer about uh, formal training because I'm not responsible for that also in, in my company. Um, and to be honest, I don't know all training that my colleagues in Japan are, are uh, executing or, or having. But uh, from a personal perspective, um, I think that uh, one of the good things that have happened in my company, I think that it's also one of the the examples that show that uh, the, the pace of deployment that we have achieved and we are uh, achieving is to get uh, development teams also very engaged and uh, collaborate very uh, uh, close uh, to, to standardization. Um, from my experience, I, I have had the uh, opportunity to, to have uh, colleagues uh, working in the actual development departments also working hand in hand uh, in understanding the standards, in uh, developing the standards, in providing bugs and feedback when something does not work from the standard. And those uh, people in the company that are doing these, these tasks, um, I'm sure that they are also then uh, expanding and explaining to the rest of the, the members in the teams how to better understand also NFV. And I would say that it's, uh, I made mean, this is more a personal, I said, uh, more a personal uh, idea, but uh, it has worked very well. And potentially um, also trying to get uh, more companies and operators engaged in standardization activities could also help uh, train internally the, the companies themselves to understand and embrace the technology. Yeah, more, more engagement will always, always help us all. Uh, unless anybody else has any comments on the, the training question, then we'll move on. Let's move on to, to our next viewer question then. Um, this one looks to be a question for the Huawei presentation. So hopefully, Deng Hui, you can help address this one first. Um, let's read this one out. Why do we still need pooling with hardware network functions? How can we decouple the dependency on hardware pooling and move towards a true NFV deployment? All right, so, so I guess that, um, so from our presentation, uh, we, we mentioned about uh, the uh, hardware resource pooling, uh, geo redundancy. Uh, so th this doesn't mean uh, we are hybrid, uh, I mean, the uh, virtual resource with hardware resource. This is purely hardware resource uh, geo-redundancy. Uh, because the, uh, I mentioned about uh, 100,000 servers around the uh, data center, in, for example, in China. And there are multiple <coughs> locations, <coughs> excuse me, the, <clears throat> sorry. So the, the multiple locations, that means hundreds of thousands servers, hardwares. They need, a, I mean, their, their lo uh, location redundancy uh, resource pooling. Um, but for the virtual resource pooling, it's on top of the hardware. It's, it's separated. I, I think that is a, maybe misunderstanding our presentation. Uh, so the operator need, first of all, they need a uh, multiple data center hardware resource pooling. Uh, this is the first layers. Then based on that, they can deploy the virtual resources on top of the hardware resource pooling. So these are the different layers uh, to the presentation. Yeah, thank you very much. And, and, and Ling Li? Uh, yes, I actually do have a further question about this one. So in your 
previous comment when you were addressing, you know, um, how um, NFP as is as it is is actually uh, not addressing um, service operators' um, requirements and in in the interpretation of the. Um, um, how can I put it? Um, redundancy or high availability solutions. It sounds to me exactly as what a cloud provider would would uh, also offer. So, would you be elaborating a little bit more how you solve the high availability issues that are different from cloud providers would provide, or or, or you know? how you solve the problem and why could they do that? So, yeah, yeah, thank you. So thank you, Lini, for asking this, uh, I mean, very important questions. Uh, uh, people are quite questioning or challenging, uh, what is the difference operators reliability? Because public cloud, they also allow, they have their own like uh, high reliability. So I want, I want to state my understanding the differences here. Uh, the, the public cloud, they are relying on the application layer's reliability, but the telecom operator infrastructure, they rely on the infrastructure uh, reliability. Uh, from, from our presentation, you can see uh, many, I mean, s telecom operators requirements, which open source today doesn't support, um, they even, I, I, you can imagine how long they can support it. Uh, so for, for that reason, I think this is a totally different direction of the, I mean, the telecom ecosystems. Are you, uh, we are application are totally rely on, rely on their own capability to build the reliability or the telecom can provide the infrastructure layers reliability, which also can enhance the application's reliability. So I, I think this will be not going to uh, one side kill the other side, but I think both direction will continue to move forward. Um, some, in some time, they will go coexist uh, for some time, for some period. So that will be, uh, I mean, also most of the people about the, the telecom should have more confidence about the future, not just uh, lose their confidence to the public cloud. I hope, Limi, you can gain more confidence. Uh, can I understand? Uh, if we were using a telecom infrastructure and with a third party, perhaps an application without that high availability assurance, but the application could leverage what has already been built as part of the capability um, in the infrastructure. And rather than, you know, like cloud, um, you know, public cloud provider, because they are lacking infrastructure capability. So the application has to take care of their own. So for any NFV solution that had been boasted to be meeting the requirements for a carrier, um, great requirements, but on top of a cloud, public cloud infrastructure, that means they must have been doing a lot more. On the application side, I think I right. I if I understand, uh, yes, I think that is true. What happened today, right? Uh, so uh, applications they design if they continue design as a standalone application, uh, they I mean as a tenant to the public cloud, they uh, do facing such challenges. I mean, uh, they have to design like a distributed. I mean the way of the application, right? So you have to uh, send your components like a uh, hash based and you can uh, as, uh, distribute to the all uh, cloud um, worldwidely in order to guarantee your reliability, guarantee your, I mean, uh, maintenance, uh, many things, right? But but I think uh, but for the telecom, they are in your, in your internal mobile's uh, office, I think that infrastructure is 100% guaranteed a connection is a low latency, high reliability. Uh, we provide a multiple domain for the applications. And uh, they, they do has a more, uh, I mean, the advantage if you uh, move uh, put your application. For example, the why the mobile edge computing is so popular? 
Uh, one of the reasons because they, they are closing to the age. The other reason is they have low latency. They are more close to the application age. Uh, so that's uh, not only reliability, but also other capability. Operators should have more confidence. I think uh, I, I, in my lifetime, I strongly recommend the operators, you, you should continue, right? You are not just stop here. You just not uh, uh, rely on your future to the public cloud. So that, that's not the uh, right approach for you to consider. Maybe. Good, good discourse there from the two of you. Thank you, thank you very much. Because uh, you, I think you've also um, answered about two or three of the the viewer questions that were coming in, and you've covered you've covered their points very nicely. As I say, there's a lot of interest on the public cloud here. Um, there is a, a question that's just come in on cloud native. So let's just uh, move the conversation ever so slightly. Let me read this one out for you and see who who would like to to contribute to this. Today, there's a wide range of solutions available in the CNCF landscape that build on, on Kubernetes. There's a lot of extensions there. There's cloud native CI, CD pipelines and tools. But what is the role that Etsy NFV can play in the context of cloud native function deployments? Would anybody like to help address that one first? Jean Pietro? Yes, well, I would say there is an important role in the general orchestration of the service because the service is not only comprised necessarily from what you can have inside a Kubernetes cluster. You also have VNFs, I mean, virtual machines. You also have uh, appliances still in the data center, like, for example, the data center gateway uh, that we can treat as a PNF. We also have the interconnection between data centers, which is also orchestratable. Uh, through uh, one infrastructure manager. And all of those elements that comprise an, a hybrid uh, network function is that is what the Etsy NFV orchestration can do for you. So it's, 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 it's a, a, in summary, is the, the value is orchestrating the service, not only the function. Great, thank you very much. Any, anybody else want to weigh in on, on the, the cloud native question? Yes, please, Deng Hui. Sure, so I just make it quick. There are two things here, right? The first is the cloud, cloud native, the other thing is the DevOps. Uh, so for the cloud native, I think uh, uh, as our presentation already mentioned about the, the containerization, uh, uh, such cloud native way. Uh, I think uh, 5G has already proved, Etsy has played the, the top uh, critical role for the uh, virtual containerization of the 5G call. Uh, I believe uh, most of the operator today uh, in the world is going to uh, rely on LC and fee specification to deploy the cloud native solution. Uh, that's definitely true. So, but we are not talking about the public cloud cloud native as I, we talked in the early time. Uh, this is the first thing, uh, it's already proved. Uh, but for the future, I think still we can lead, uh, LC and can lead, for example, uh, bare metal or whatever, uh, they're still starting or considering how they can contribute in the future. The other thing about DevOps, uh, CICD, I think Lili also mentioned about something, uh, automation. Uh, so for the DevOps, I think also uh, uh, the SMV in the long time ago already has started the CICD uh, proposal. Uh, continue operator, we are reference those approach uh, as a reference approach for the for their commodity deployment, I, I just defend a little two things back to John. Yeah. Well, I I will not expect in my answer. I, actually, I think that Jan Pietro already uh, explained quite well. Um, I would say just summarize uh, the role of Etsy in 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 this uh, area. Uh, sometimes I see it like the glue. Uh, glue that is able to uh, mix uh, all the different aspects that an operator really needs in the end uh, for deploying uh, cloud native functions. Uh, beyond all of the enhancements that uh, are already in place in different uh, parts of the framework uh, to consider uh, cloud native uh, uh, aspects, um, they, we also cover many other aspects like uh, connectivity management, uh, like connectivity towards the OSS systems, uh, automation, general orchestration network services. And I would see it like uh, it's a very important role of its and as I said, as a summary, it's like uh, we, 
we provide the glue to to put uh, in place all the best of the breed technologies that are coming from upstream, like uh, Kubernetes and, and OpenStax and so on, and try to make a sense uh, for the operator um, and vendors. Thank you, Joanne. And, and Pierre, you wanted to come in as well. We've we just about got time to, to squeeze a few more responses in. Yeah, just very quickly, uh, very directly, uh, at CNV has uh, activities called Test 006 in the test working group, which addresses DevOps and CICD. So that if you're talking about uh, the, the continuous delivery of cloud native functions and then uh, continuous deployment, that implies necessarily test as well. So there's uh, many, uh, a few activities in the TST working group directly addressing those things, whether it's cloud native or not, and they can be adapted quite quickly. But test six is literally about DevOps and, and CICD and test 13, which is very active now, is standardizing how you test those things and uh, what does that test template look? And it's made to be machine readable, fully automatable, um, so that, those are two direct activities to uh, cloud native function uh, deployment, I think. Thank you very much, Pierre. And um, I think we've got time for one, one more question I'd, I'd like to um, address to all of you. Um, in our interview earlier with, with Bruno Chatteris, uh, the NFE ISG sh chair, he spoke about how the process for Etsy NFE Release 5 was now getting underway. So I think this is a good question we've had in to, to ask all of you here, um, and that is what are the top two or three items that you think need to be urgently addressed in Release 5? So let me, let me go around all of you in turn, and, and, and Borja, maybe I could uh, start with, with you first. Yes, in our case, as, as I mentioned, uh, we consider the, the use of the UAVs for, for provisioning different uh, communication services. So for us, it's so important the, the, the security on the, on the communication, uh, not only for the, for the let's say, the, the infrastructure resources, but also for the, for the services that are uh, running on top of them, because, uh, as you know, we, we use uh, mobile nodes and they can be deployed on demand on, on any area. And for, the, for this, uh, we, we, we think that uh, it's more, let's say, risky to, to suffer attacks. So, so we think that the security is one of the most important things. Thank you very much. And uh, Joanne, what about you? What, what would you say are some of the uh, two or three uh, most important areas that need to be addressed? Okay, um, I would say that uh, release five could uh, evolve in three dimensions maybe um, one dimension with is uh, more functional um, in that sense i believe that uh, what will happen with previous five is that more enhancements uh, will be provided into the framework uh, on existing functionality uh, like trying to provide more automation uh, try to provide uh, 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 better orchestration of resources and so on so i consider that more like uh, a functional enhancement and then I would say that uh, Release 5 will evolve in two other directions. So one direction will be from expanding applicability of NFE to many different uh, network domains. Um, despite uh, already having many different use cases long time ago on applicability of NFE, uh, maybe there has been a little bit of perception that NFE was like only for core, which is not true. So there is a chance uh, of, uh, of leveraging the framework of release 5.2 to, to demystify a little bit uh, this perception and make sure that we can address in the right way uh, all the requirements that are also um, um, coming from other network domains. And uh, other dimension uh, could be also on, on, on the layers. So we have typically worked a lot on resource management. We have lot, uh, worked a lot also on adding new types of resources. However, uh, there is still room for expanding uh, uh, common operations matters and uh, the benefits of uh, the merits of NFE towards even more the applications themselves. And why not also towards the uh, bottom line infrastructure, which, for example, has been a little bit forgotten also in NFE, uh, since we have not addressed physical uh, management of physical equipment uh, in that matter. So, I would say possibly three dimensions that uh, we can work on. 
Thank you very much. And Gian Pietro, what about you? What, what are the, the main areas you'd like to see addressed urgently in Release 5? Uh, okay, well, first of all, network functions configuration, as I mentioned before, day one, day two operations. I, I, I think that's urgent because that's one of the biggest values from what we have seen in the field. Uh, second, the containerized network functions, well, but that's already been addressed, uh, but I think it will keep evolving. And uh, let me add a third one, which is not related to standards, but but yes, to the future of, of, of NFB standards in, in general, which is uh, the need to encourage BNF or yeah BNF vendors to support the NFB vision more actively by remaining as open as possible to multi-vendor NFB deployments. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, NFBI that is that belongs to another vendor because, as you know, the only importance of having standards is multi-vendor interoperability. And if we keep uh, having some vendors so actively and sometimes exclusively promoting vertical deployments. Uh, as it, as it, as is it, it, it is uh, uh, the only option, uh, we can move forward in, in bringing NFB benefits to the local industry, also affecting, of course, standards evolution. So it's uh, that idea. It's, not, it's a concept more than a standard. Sure. Great. Well, thank you for that. And Pierre, what about you? What would you like to see addressed urgently in Release 5? Well... I'm not going to focus on features. That's for somebody else smarter to, to think about. I, I'm just going to think about themes. And these themes exist already. I just want them to continue evolving and continue happening. And I think it's critical. And the first one is collaboration between different SDOs and especially collaboration between SDOs and open source. This exists today. And an example, like Gian Pietro said, uh, cloud native functions is being adopted by Etsy, uh, and that's moving forward. And that needs to keep happening because I think divergence is everybody's enemy. Everybody, it's awful. Uh, secondly, more automation in terms of delivery of software from vendor to operator to uh, if there's somebody in between as well. So I think a lot of improvements can be done for that. I, uh, some are already in progress, and I think that's a key part of the automation framework. And thirdly, uh, I will completely agree with Borja, is uh, security. Security is key, period. Excellent. Thank you very much for those. And Ling Li, uh, what about the features or themes that you would like to see addressed in Release 5? As you would imagine, I would take this last opportunity to to stress out automation as the major theme that we would like to promote for release five and in particular we would like to um, ask our partners also to be paying special focus or attention to these three use cases for automation um, enhancement so in addition to orchestration uh, just mentioned also configuration to actually fully automate the service provisioning process. And in addition to that is we also need automation and heavy manual to play in a role in the service maintenance as well as optimization in resource uh, consumption. Um, those two procedures, the, those kind of like use cases, I, I don't think are uh, gaining much um, attention as it would deserve because uh, these are the three phases that we see constitute to an overall end-to-end -end service lifecycle management. And, and lastly, um, a DevOps automation mechanism to ensure that all these automation techniques, is, especially if it is enhanced with some of the rules or dynamic policies or even artificial intelligence techniques that are actually uh, needs to be adapted according to the network dynamics, those are actually in requirements for a continuous uh, improvements in the runtime. And those are the three things that we would like to see be, be, be promoted as the focal point for automation evolution for further NFESG's practice in hopefully for release five. And we will be working hard to push that. Thank you. 
Thank you. And finally, Deng Hui, your, your, your two or three areas that you would like to see urgently addressed with the upcoming release five. Sure. So I, I agree. Most of the people, they already mentioned the many directions. I, I think they are pretty important. Uh, besides of that, I'm also considering, um, I think that people are talking about, uh, uh, I mean, cloud native uh, approach, but I would like to specifically emphasize uh, the bare matter uh, direction uh, is very critical for the HCM fee to consider to lead, lead the directions. Um, otherwise, uh, the world is going to diverge again. This is the first thing. The second thing, I think, um, because of the MV has some influence to the mobile age computing, uh, and also for the today's telecom operators uh, network, for their mobile age computing, there are certain percentage of the access uh, solution will exist over there. Uh, for those cases, I think um, vertical, vertical application based on the, uh, with the uh, because they, and we argued in, before about uh, how strong the operators, I mean, reliability, I mean, security. And uh, so those strengths will help operators to uh, support their infrastructure for the vertical applications. Uh, this is the second thing I, I'm thinking about. I think the other thing that people already mentioned, uh, automation, edge computing and uh, testing and a collaboration with open source, they are all very important. So let's can you work together for the future of Edison MV. Thank you. Nicely said, and that's a fantastic list of work items for the ISG. You're all going to be kept extremely busy in the coming months, I'm sure. We are out of time and we need to bring the discussion to a close for today. But thank you all very much for participating and sharing your expertise with us. And thanks also to our audience for sending in their questions. Don't forget all the presentations from the NFE Evolution event, together with the interview with the Etsy NFE ISG chair and our earlier panel on the operational experience and pain points of NFE are available to watch on demand here on the website. The NFE Evolution series has been brought to you by Etsy, produced by Telecom TV and sponsored by Huawei. And on behalf of all the team, thank you for watching and goodbye.